Okay, this is the spot we left off. You fill that. So we've been working to find the x-intercepts of graphs. So we've been doing a lot of factoring. We did the GCF, simple trinomial, complex trinomial, and difference of squares. So now we're going to find out there's another way yet. And this is called the quadratic formula. So this is it. Okay. So here we go. Let's try this one. Okay, so when you're looking at this, there's A, B, and a C. So A is how many x squared? That's what A is. So in this, how many x squared do you have? One. You have one x squared. So A is one. The B is how many X's do you have? So how many X's? This one, I have 12. And C is when there's just a number without an X. So in this, C equals 36. Okay? So that's the A, the B, and the C part. Okay, so here we go x equals negative b. So this time, since b was 12, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to write negative 12. Plus minus the square root of. What is b squared? So I'm going to actually do this squared, 12 squared. So I'm going to write 144, 12 squared, subtract 4 times A times C. All of it gets divided by 2 times the A number. Okay, so that's how I fill in the formula. I follow the letters and I plug it in. Okay, so now I'm going to write the next step. So negative 12 plus or minus the square root of something over, and then I'm going to make that a 2 times 1, I'm going to make that a 2. So now I'm going to work to figure out this number. Okay, so in my calculator, 144 subtract 4 times 1 times 36. So that's what I typed in. And it gets me a 0. So that's zero. Okay, does anybody know in math what the square root of zero is? Just zero, right? If I have a number and I add zero to it or subtract zero, would you be okay if I kind of just thought like this? It's irrelevant, right? If you add zero or subtract zero, So that makes the top negative 12 divided by 2, which is negative 6. So on this one, it says that I can verify by factoring. So let's verify this with factoring. Okay. So if I'm going to factor, it's a simple trinomial. So x times x. And then I'm going to say what multiplies to 36 and adds to 12. Multiplies to 36 
and adds to 12. You have two numbers that would do that. 6 times 6. So x equals negative 6. That's it, because it's negative 6 in this bracket and negative 6 in that bracket. Okay, verify with your calculator as well. So y equals... Okay, x squared plus 12x plus 36. I'm going to graph it. And what do I know? It looks like this. So that's what my calculator was showing me. And... How many times does it cross the x-axis? Just once. Okay, next. Solve. So a equals 2, b equals negative 3, and c equals negative 4. How many x squareds? How many x's? How many numbers? All right, so here's the formula. x equals All right, so ready to plug in? Negative b is here, so write the opposite. So our b was negative 3, so we're going to write positive 3. Okay, you always do the opposite of the b. Now b squared is 9. Okay, mistakes can happen there because people think negative 3 squared is negative 9. And this is why. If you try to, to type it in like that, it gives you the wrong answer. Here's a correct way of typing it in. Okay, so this is what people do if, um, sometimes to make an error, and that's a correct way. Okay, I don't even bother with the negative because I know whatever I square is positive. So b squared subtract 4 times the A times the C. B squared subtract 4 A C. All over 2 A. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to make the bottom four already. So we're going to work on this root. Nine subtract four times two times negative four. So this is my typing. Four, or nine subtract four times two times negative four. And I get 41. That was good on the way we typed it. Okay, so the square root of 41 is not something that's perfect, so we're going to leave it. Okay, so now I'm going to do this. I'm going to get two answers. 3 plus root 41 is all going to get divided by 4. 3 minus root 41 is all going to get divided by 4. So that's what my calculator is going to look like. See how I'm, I have to have brackets on that because I'm trying to say the whole top is going to get divided by 4. Okay, now I'm going to show you some features on your calculator that might save you some time with this one. Okay, so bracket. 
3 plus root. Do you know how to get the root? You have to go second square. 41. Okay, you're actually going to need two brackets there. Do you see? Because the 41 needs a bracket and the whole thing needs a bracket. Divided by 4. We're good with that? How I typed it? And we all get 2.35. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna hit second enter. Second enter, and guess what it does? It brings back whatever I did last up. See how it brings it all back up again? And now I'm gonna go over, and that plus, I'm gonna hit subtract. So that saved me from typing it all again. So second enter on your calculator will bring something back for you. Okay, and now this time, negative 0.85. All right, so verify with your calculator. So here we go. Y equals 2X squared, subtract 3X, subtract 4. Graph it. Okay, I'm going to second calculate. So this x-intercepts are also called zeros. Left, enter, right, enter, enter again, negative 0.85. We're correct, right? Because we had that answer. Okay, and then this one, I'm going to do the same thing, calculate a zero, left bound it, enter, right bound it, enter, 2.35. Okay, so here's, do we have room to write like this a little box of rules? Okay, so we have three situations. So in this formula, right, you always have something plus or minus the square root over something. That's how the formula is going to always work. Here's the three scenarios. If this square root is positive, so for example, 41 was a positive number, it will give us two answers. you'll get two x-intercepts. If this was the square root of zero, so we had that example, if it was the square root of zero, we ended up with exactly one x-intercept. And we had, didn't do one of these, but what if that came out negative? What would happen in math once you try to square root a negative number? What would happen to you? It would say, hey, that's an error. It doesn't work, which means there's going to be no x-intercepts. And that's possible, right? 
Parabolas can do that. They might not cross at all. <laughs>